What's good YouTube, Neon Nexus here with a deck profile. It is Giga Plant. Uh, just to let you know ahead of time, I will not be revealing the side deck as it's still in work. Um, but I have a lot of fun just playing with the main as just having some casual games, this, that and the other. So I'm going to get straight into it and uh, hope you enjoy uh, watching this as much as I enjoy playing it. So we've got the key part of the deck, Double Giga Plant. Um, it makes all of our plays really. Um, it's our boss monster of the deck. It gets all our plants out of the grave and gets them out of our hand if needed. Um, it's synchro fodder, it's overlay fodder. It just does so many things. Um, if this card was just a normal effect monster with this sort of effect, I think it would have been touched by the Baroness a long time ago. But the fact it's a Gemini uh, has luckily left it untouched. Um, so. Yeah, we run two Giga Plant because I think three is a little bit cloggy. Because you don't want to get Giga Plant in your hand. We've got Lone Fire, which gets out most of the cards in our deck, including our Giga Plant. So we run two of those. And yes, I do have rares, but I'm using the Astral Pack 4 commons because uh, my rares are a little bit banged up. And, you know, it, it looks quite nice, the common. So, yeah. Most of this deck. Uh, is low rarity, but you know there are some high rarity cards in there where I could, where I've just sort of had them lying around spare and thrown them in. So, got double lone fire, dandelion, and spore. You know, normal plant engine. Then I'm running triple nature cherries. Uh, shout out to Darkness L Night and Eat Nine for hooking me up with these babies. Um, they're still surprisingly expensive, probably because they've only been released in Star Trek Blast. It's a level one plant tuner. Earth type, which is really good, and um, when it's from a battle card effect um, by your opponent, you get to special up to two more from the deck into face down defense position. So it's really good for uh, setting up. Um, it can die, and you don't really care because you can get up to two more. And the great thing is it says is up to two. So even if you draw two, you can still get that one out of the deck. It is never dead, really. And I just really like it. Um, then we've got Debris Dragon. Brings back a lot of the cards in our deck. Um, and you just sort of run it with plants really, don't you? So uh, tr Double Card Trooper. I'd like Triple Card Trooper. Uh, but yeah, I'm running Ultras. Uh, because I'm lucky enough to have some Ultras. Would like a First Ed one to match this one. But hey ho. Uh, it's there to basically mill and be brought back via Debris Dragon. And... Uh, works quite well with the rest of the deck. It just sort of dumps your crap into the graveyard and then allows you to make plays. So I like opening up a card trip. It's my favourite card to open up with. I've just been really enjoying card trip in this format for some reason. Um, then we got Double Spell Striker. Uh, shout out to my mate Colin who hooked me up with some supers. Now, the Spell Striker idea, along with the next card I'm going to show you, uh, Junk Forward was an idea uh, brought to light to me by Dub K Dad. He uploaded a video involving these two warrior monsters. I think it's his own Gigavise deck or his plant psychics or something. And I just thought it was a really nice idea and it works really, really well. Now, for you guys who don't know, um, Spell Striker is an old card. Um, Super Rare only came out in the game promo. Um, basically what he does is you banish a spell from your graveyard and you special summon him. He is that good. Um, so if I mill spells off of Card Trooper, I don't really have to worry because it's just food for my Spell Striker. Um, double Jump Forward, it's like a Cyber Dragon and it reads, if I can get clear, clear enough, uh, Shadow. Uh, if I control no monsters, I can special summon this card from my hand. My opponent doesn't have to have monsters. All I need is a clear monster card zone um, with no other monsters on the field to special summon this guy. Ideally in defence because, you know, he's got more defence than he has attack. He's a level 3 earth, which is quite prevalent. Same with Spell Striker and Card Trooper. And that will come to light uh, when I reach the extra deck and some next cards coming up. So, double jump forward. 
Triple Crane Crane. This card, oh my god, it's like tour guides for the graveyard. It is so good. It just brings back a level 3 monster back from the grave. It's like if Junk Synchron and uh, tour guide had a illegitimate love child. <laughs> as weird as that may seem. Um, but Crane Crane, I absolutely love this card. Um, I love the card so much that I've actually increased the deck count to 41 to include the third. Um, because it doesn't matter if we mill two off fire uh, card tree, but yes, that's going to suck because, you know, that's two normal summons that allow you to go off um, used up. But, you know, Crane Crane can still bring back itself. Card Trooper, Spell Striker, Junk Forward, uh, Dandelion. It brings back a big majority of this deck and it is just so godly for making key plays. And then finally, to top off the monsters, we've got Ron Redox. Um, nice tin rare, courtesy of Dark Magician, 18, uh, Dark Magician uh, 84. Um, basically, I'll include Redox because we're running so many Earth monsters. Um, and obviously I'm running Debris as well, so... Debris when it's milled by a card trooper, at least it's not dead in the graveyard, it's redox food. Um, I use it mainly as a monster reborn and to uh, allow me to synchro into um, better monsters for situations. It's just a really nice all around card, and I enjoy the dragon rulers being at one, um, especially for this purpose, as being a one off tech card. So yeah, I guess you could call it I am teching one Radox because it's a monster reborn, it's a 3000 arse to sit on the stool, you can sink with it, you can overlay with it and god knows what else. So yeah, that wraps up your monsters. That's uh, about 20 monsters there. Moving on to the spells, we have Reinforcement of the Army, nice super rare from um, Magic Ruler. Uh, foolish, they search out our um, search out our spell strikers and our junk forwards. It's just really good. I really enjoy having this card in there. It's four, four targets, but if it gets milled, you know, it's spell striker food. Uh, foolish burial lets us set up our grave, dump dandy, dump crane, dump spore, dump trooper, dump whatever you like. One for one because I'm running four level ones in the deck, uh, three Nashira Cherries and one Spore. Um, as you know, it's not really running any hand traps in the deck. This is because it's not really designed to be a sort of top tier competitive uh, go getter. It was really designed out of the pure love and fun of plants and the fact that Gigavise is such an old school deck. And you know me, I'm big for nostalgia. So I'm running one for one because it allows us to make some nutty plays when I draw into it. Um, and it doesn't require me to use up my normal summon, which is quite pre really prevalent in this deck, I should stress. Um, because the uh, if you don't normal summon, the better. The more special summons you get in just allows you to make so many recovery plays. Because obviously Crane uses up your normal summon. Um, and you really want to save your normal summon for things like Crane and possibly Card Trooper. Um, so, using one for one allows me to pitch that out of hand, set up my grave, I can pitch a dead spell for Spell Strike, I can pitch a plant. It just allows me to do so many plays. Um, I'll probably do a combo video on some of the plays you can do with this deck uh, later on. Um, 2 Super so Nutrient, because... Uh, we like seeing no. We like to see Lone Fire. It also at times allows me to dig for um, other plant type monsters out of the deck. Because basically, what it is is you tribute a level one or two plant type monster, special summon from your deck, from the deck guys. A plant type monster that is uh, plus three levels higher or less. So it allows us to tribute a cherry, a spore. Um, fluff tokens etc to get to our lone fire to make our plays so I can set a spore I can set a cherries or have random tokens lay on the field and I just play super soul nutrient pop it off and get out lone fire to continue to make plays and if I mill it once again spell striker food 
Um, if Lone Far was to go to three, as per the ban list, car, uh, this supposed ban list that I discussed in an earlier video, I'd probably drop one of these, uh, if not both, uh, to because Lone Far will be three, and it'll be a lot more consistent to be seen in hand. Uh, then we move on to our equip spells because, as you know, Gigavise uh, plays equip spells because it needs Supervise to get its Gemini effect. Um, I'm playing two DDR, Different Dimension Reincarnation, because we do a fair amount of banishing in the set. We banish through Spore, we banish through Redox. Um, we can get our cards banished through Bottomless and Deprison and things like that. And it's really nice just to make those recursion plays. It allows me to set up my graveyard by pitching the card. If it gets milled, like I said, or it gets used up, it's Spell Striker food. It, I just find this card really nice to use. Um, and if I wasn't worried about cloggy hands, I'd probably run it at three. Of course, we've got the Heart and Soul of the deck, which is supervised to combo with our Giga Plant. Um, ideally, you want to make Power Tool Dragon to search out. You probably want to reveal, depending on the situation, three supervised. In which case, it doesn't really matter which card the opponent chooses because you can get supervised to hand. Or, you know, you're just going to be revealing it. You're going to reveal, like, uh, DDR and. Supervised for your opponent to add to your hand. Um, DDR brings back cards which you can in turn probably make another powerful dragon to search out. Uh, supervised. And Supervised is just a really cool card. Uh, not only does it give my Giga Plant its effects, but it's also when Supervised is sent to the graveyard, I get to special summon a normal monster in my graveyard. Now, as uh, Giga Plant is treated as a normal monster being a Gemini, um, in the graveyard, it allows me to, when Supervisor goes boom, or when it just simply falls off, to bring back a Giga Plant from my graveyard, which is really good because uh, when I synchro with Giga Plant, equipped with a Supervise, with say something like a Spore or a Naturia Cherry to make a Power Tool Dragon, this drops off, brings back my um, Giga Plant after my synchro play. In which I'll probably be making another uh, Power Tool Dragon to search out, probably supervise again to equip to my Giga Plant to bring back that same tuner to synchro again. And you can just make some really nutty plays. Um, and then we move on to our sort of staple ish cards uh, Dark Hole for Field Wiping. And you know, if you've got a Giga Plant filled with a supervise, you can afford to play Dark Hole because you know your Giga Plant's coming back. Uh, Book of Moon for defense. Triple MST. So, yeah, we run quite a lot of spells. So, that's why I'm running Spell Striker. Um, we need to run these spells because they are all combo pieces to the deck. Plus, you know, your generic staples. Which has made me seriously reduce the size of traps that I'm running. Um, I have possibly considered a pure turbo build as in no traps whatsoever but we need some form of protection with this deck so I'm running the bare minimum traps and um, that I can run really and this is what I'm running I'm running double mirror force and then the limited quad of torrential bottomless compulse and warning um, so yeah we need a certain amount of protection um, so this is just the bare minimum for me. Mirror Force is a good clearance card, and then the limited tr uh, quarter limited for a reason. So on the gate summons. Compulse can mess up plays. Bottomless gets rid of monsters and torrential punishes your opponent for overcommitting their field. So um, gonna try and wrap this up uh, with the extra deck. We have got Fortune Tune can't be targeted. Each uh, during each must standby phases, I gain five hundred life points. When this card dies. Uh, this card goes back to my extra deck and I get to shuffle, uh, I think it's two, um, yeah, two level three monsters in my graveyard back to the deck. So this goes back to my extra deck and I get to shuffle back into my deck, things like Lone Fires, Spell Strikers, etc. So it's like a mini pot of Avarice um, and it's really annoying to get rid of because it can protect itself uh, by detaching materials like Zen Mains. Uh, we've got two Malaya Trees, would be nice to have a second, th first Ed, but hey-ho. Sometimes I wish I was running three of this card, but due to extract space, it 
uh, quite uh, tricky to you know plan to get three in there. It's got weak stats, so it can be run over. It's mainly a combo card, dash setup card, but you don't really want to set up with Melier. You mainly just want to combo off with it. Um, so I probably wouldn't mind a third if it's going cheap enough. Uh, just in case you don't know, Melier, you detach material. Um, and you dump a plant from the deck to the grave, or you detach material to special on a plant type monster from your grave back to the field, but it has to be in defense mode, guys. Um, and it requires two level three earths, that's why Crane Crane is so good, uh, and brings back all our level three earth targets because it makes our melee. Uh, then we've got Gauntlet Launcher. This card is just really cool. I like to call it the poor man's M7, but in some ways, it's superior to M7. Uh, sure, it's got basic 20, 2400 def attack, uh, but it's got nice defense of 2-8. Um, and you can activate his effect twice per turn, or, well, as many times per turn as you like, really, as long as he's got Xyz materials. He takes two level 6s, which is like two Giga Plants, or uh, Giga Plant and uh, our Synchro level 6 monster. I just find him really nice for clearing threats off the board. Uh, guy Charger because I'm poor and I do not own Big Eye or Dracosac, so if I get one of those, Guy Dragon's coming out. But Guy Dragon can overlay on top of my Gauntlet Launcher, so it's not all too bad. Uh, Formula Synchron, because we like to draw cards. Whisper Colossus, uh, I think Scapegoat user talked me into getting this card in the extra deck. It does help because it reduces the opponent's attack points to zero. Um, it has a nice defense of 2-3, and if I can get another monster on board, it can also clear problematic monsters by reducing the attack to zero and then get another monster to run over it. Uh, TG Hyper Librarian could possibly change for a Catasta, but when I combo off, Librarian adds me hand advantage, and this is, is something that you can run out of in this deck if you are not careful. Uh, Queen of Thorns, I really like this card, wish it had higher stats, but if it had higher stats I think it would be a bit too good. Basically its effect reads, as each player uh, must pay 1000 life points to normal summon or special summon a plant type monster from their hand, uh, yeah to normal summon or special summon a plant type monster, a non plant type monster from their hand. So if it's not a plant, you're paying a grand to summon it. And against things like Evil Swarm and Constellas, it can be really nasty because they're having to pay 2,000 just to get their monsters on the board. Um, so yeah, Queen of Thorns is quite nice. Wish it had higher stats. It's only on 2-2 two, two and 1-8. Um, it's a light plant, which is quite interesting. But I really like this card. It's a nice sort of um, stun card. But it's... Effects read uh, one tuna plus one or more non tuna plant type monsters, so you have to use a plant type monster to synchro into this card. Uh, Black Rose Dragon, because we like to nick the field and it works with our debris dragon. Uh, two power tools to search out our DDRs and our supervisors and to overlay and synchro with, and it's probably one of the only decks that you will see power tool being used in, other than, you know, um, Morphtronics. And then two level eights, uh, Crimson Blader, I like to call him Crimson Bladder, uh, starts from your opponent's special summoning high level monsters, when it destroys a monster by battle and sends a graveyard, and Scrap Dragon for popping crap off the field, and Star Eater because Star Eater is a boss, and Debris plus Power Tool or Debris plus um, Redox can make this guy, or even a level four Spore plus those level seven monsters can make this guy, and he can make a lot of pushes. And I have won games because of this guy. So yeah, that's my deck, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, any thoughts on how to improve it and stuff. I tried to avoid running the Light Swan engine. Because I don't want to mill too much. I like my hand advantage. Um, and I've just never really liked Light Swan, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I tried to work around the Light Swan engine. It works alright. It can give me some dead hands at times. Which is probably why it's not suitable for massive competitive play. But it's just a nice fun deck to play. It is pretty much budget apart from some of the cards in the extra deck like Melier of the Trees. Um, but most of this you can sort of build on a budget. It's I choose to run Cherries, you don't have to. 
Um, I just choose it because it's a little bit consistent. It's like redox food and yeah, works nice with gigaplant stuff. The the cherries and the um, extra deck cards are probably what is going to make you spend the most money on the deck if you decide to build it. Uh, like I said, it's not a, really a competitive deck. It's a much slower pace, but can also be quite nutty as well. So yeah, I've been rambling for 20 minutes, guys. I appreciate you watching my videos lately, and hopefully you'll continue to watch me and my videos, because I'm starting to upload more. So yeah, um, it's been a long day. I've been here next to Sunny out. Peace.